Live and hot. How's everyone doing today? Good. Look to your neighbor and say you look good this morning. Does anyone not? You look good? David, you look good. David, look good. You look good back there. I'm getting the people that don't have neighbors, so. All right. So who knows what today is? Super Bowl Sunday, but most importantly, it's the day that we come to church and praise and worship Jesus, right? Amen. But on, come on, Dale, give me something, give me something, Dale. Amen. No, we're just. I'm glad that you guys all made it out here today to uh, come and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Before we get uh, started, we're going to say a prayer, but you know. We're going to do, uh, who, who's the Patriots fan? Anyone Patriot fans here? Anyone brave enough? Woo, woo. One, two, three, four, five. Wow. We doubled first service. We had three first service. Then we got five or six this service. And the rest are Seahawks. Anybody going for, anyone just kind of even or equal? Bryce, who are you going for? Broncos. Lions, I know Cowboys back there, Steelers, so we all got our, we all got our teams, so <clears throat> during junior high, I usually say on Wednesday nights, anyone have a prayer request, and all the young men say, please pray for my team to win, and please help me jump higher, and please help me north beat south, and east, and west, and all these little football teams, and basketball teams, and I love it. It's great. So we pray for him. So I'm sure all the older men have the same prayer request that our football team wins. So we will pray for the Patriots and the, the Seattle Seahawks after, afterwards, maybe. And uh, just pray that's a good game. But before we get started in that, we'll just say a blessing over the, uh, the service and uh, get going. So, dear Lord, we just thank you for this day. <clears throat> we thank you for this time that we get to uh, come together and just fellowship and worship you and just uh, be in your presence. And just just pray that our hearts, our minds, our ears will be open for what you have for us. I pray that you'll be able to use my words to uh, enlighten, to further your kingdom, to give wisdom, not to hinder, but to encourage. Uh, And we just pray that uh, everyone that is not here is safe. And we just thank you for everyone that made it here on this Sunday morning. We love you, we love you, we love you. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. All right. So, today, we're going to be talking about identity. Identity in Christ. And Pastor Brian did a fantastic job in the bulletin. And gave us a little thumbprint, fingerprint, right there. Everyone's fingerprint is different, right? So, so today we're going to be talking about our identity in Christ and how important it is for us to understand who we are in Christ, right? And understand what God says about us and how we can input that into our life to help us further what God has in store for us and to build us up. Uh, finding our identity in Christ, uh, what he thinks of us, what he, what he says about us, uh, what he has in store for us, and uh, how he made us. Um, everyone say, I am God's masterpiece. Outstanding. Our major, uh, our main uh, scripture today is going to be Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. So if you have a Bible, you can flip those pages to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. If you do not have that, you can look up on the main screen. And we're going to read it from the New Living T- Translation. And this just happens to be, just happens to be, uh, your pastor, Pastor Ken's favorite verse. He has us on all his shirts and hats and all that kind of stuff. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. For we are God's masterpiece. Say that one more time. For we... That's masterpiece. Outstanding. So what is a masterpiece? The defi- definition of a masterpiece from the dic- dictionary says, in modern use refers to a creation that has been given much critical praise, especially one that is considered the greatest work of a person's career 
or to a work of outstanding creativity, skill, workmanship. God uses the term, we are his great masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. He spent, uh, he gave all of his creativity, all of his thinking, all of his being and making us, and he calls us his masterpiece. Uh, The question I have for you guys today is, can we accept God's view of us? Can we accept that he calls us his masterpiece? Can we accept, um, or, or do we let the world tell us who we are, right? So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to give you uh, an example from my life, how my identity uh, was shaped, informed, how it affected me, but then how my belief uh, in my walk with Jesus Christ reshaped it and is now what I claim, right? So, usually I come here Saturday night and uh, practice my uh, sermon a little bit in front of empty chairs and kind of give it give a time a timetable. So I didn't do that this Saturday. Like yesterday, I was a little bit busy, but I was doing it in my head. But I, I didn't get a time. So first service was pretty short. The kids workers were pretty happy, but they're like, we didn't even get to finish our whole lesson. So you don't have to wait too long. Well, it'd be a short one, but it'd be a good one, hopefully. Um, so, can we accept God's view of us as being his masterpiece? Or has our life experiences had such a great impact on us that we cannot see what our Heavenly Father sees? Um, a little story about me. Um, from an early age, I can remember, from when I can remember second grade to graduating high school, I was considered learning disabled, LD, learning, I had a learning disability. This wasn't uh, something that, that I was proud of, but it was something that the teachers and the professionals that tested me and in school said I had, right? So I went to, every year I went to my own class, you know, they had one little block of, I could go to and have my own teacher and I could get special help and I could take tests for longer, all because I had this, this title or this thing, I was learning disabled, right? So that affected my outlook for basically the rest of my life, you know? It, it, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't necessarily a bad thing, right? That because it, it was just something, right? It was something that the professionals said I had, the teachers said I had. I, you know, kind of used it, you know, I, not used it in a bad way, but I, I had it. And, uh, but it affected how I saw myself as a student, as a person, and what I thought I could accomplish later on in my life, right? Because it kind of puts you in a little box. Um, so throughout my whole high school, elementary age, whatever school, I had that. Um, it, it didn't affect me too much, but I knew I, I had that title, right? Um, so the question I put down is, who knows that being labeled something affects you in some fashion or form? It can be both positive or negative. There, I put down some simple things of you could be considered smart or slow. You could be considered... Uh, strong or weak, you could be considered, um, you know, good looking, not so good looking. You know, you, even your parents can can label you. You could, you can. This is my athletic child. This is my smart child. This is my troublemaker child. You know, all these different th- these titles and labels that we just automatically give our kids uh, affect their identity in some way, fashion, or form, right? And it, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative but they all have an impact on us. In mine, with uh, the learning disability or learning disabled, you know, it affected, you know, what I, thought I, what I thought I could accomplish throughout my life. And, uh, you know, the teachers didn't mean to do that. The, the professionals that, whatever, tested me didn't mean to do that. It just happened. Um, when I was in the Marine Corps, I joined the Marine Corps in the year 2000, right after high school, and uh, I was in boot camp. And if 
anyone has ever been in the military, you know never to raise your hand, right? When they ask a question, you just, you don't volunteer, you don't raise your hand, you don't say a word just because you just don't do it. And I wasn't that smart, hence the learning disabled, right? Just that was a joke on myself, so I can make fun of myself. I raised my hand. They asked the question, Did, uh, does anyone have trouble learning? And of course, in my mind, since I've been labeled it for years, I'm like, yes, I do. I have, <laughs> I have issues learning. And so the drill instructor, Staff Sergeant uh, Weeks, uh, came over, and he, uh, it sound, he sounds like Weeks, you know, bad name, but he was a short little, and this is not right, he was a short little black guy, but he was like the meanest guy, and he was, he was known as the heavy hat. If you've ever been in the Marine Corps, I'm sure they might do it in the, the uh, Army too, but there's like, a, there's like a father figure, there's a nice one, and then there's a heavy hat, which is you just don't want to mess with them. So anyways, he came over to me, and he asked me what my issue was, and I told him I had a learning disability. I was LD. And of course, he had no clue what LD meant, and told me, no, you don't. And from that day forward, I'm like, okay, I don't. <laughs> which, which might sound really funny and really stupid, but when you have a drill instructor that's a heavy hat in front of you, telling you that you don't have something that you've been told for your entire life that you have, and he's in your face spitting at you, telling you that you don't have it, that I don't know what that is, you say, yes, sir, and you move on, and you deal with it, and you don't rely on the excuse or the title that's been given to you your whole life. You, 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 and we'll get to this, but you, you, you get rid of that baggage that you've been carrying with your entire life, you move on, and you just do it. From that day forward, I, you know, got out of the Marine Corps, I went to college, finished college, got my, my um, not building myself up, I'm just letting you kind of know. I got my bachelor's in biz, business administration, and now I'm working on my master's degree from Liberty University. Would I, ha I have ever been able to do that if I, did, uh, if I didn't have that experience of a drill instructor being in my face saying, I don't know what that is, you don't have it. He didn't say I'm smart, but basically said, you, you, you cut this off and you do what you're supposed to do, right? So, that, funny, but that's when that title that I had went away. <clears throat> so I put, this affected my outlook on what I thought I could accomplish. Um, but that's not the point. The point is not that I had a disability. The point is, that sometimes we take baggage, names, titles, experiences from this life that we live that our Heavenly Father never intended us to have, right? Sometimes we take on different experiences from our past and we drag them with us throughout our whole entire life that God said, I've already forgiven you of this. This is no longer an issue. This is no longer your baggage. I've bared the cross. I've bared the pain. I've bared the suffering. It's on me. Let it go and do the mission that I have put in front of you as a chosen child of God. <clears throat> now, some people might say, but the life, the experiences, and all these different things that we go through shape us, right? And I agree, they do shape us. But that doesn't mean that you have to be dragging around all this baggage from past marriages, from past relationships, from work, from all these different things that you go through. It doesn't mean that you have to drag it along with you throughout your life. Because at a point, when you hopefully accept Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And everything is wiped away. Everything is clean and you are new in him. Amen? So the baggage we carry with us affects us and our mission with, which God put into place long before we were born. <clears throat> Some of our baggage needs to be left behind and replaced with God's baggages, with, with what Jesus thinks of us, with 
his identity, not our identity. Um, we are his masterpiece. We are his masterpiece. He has created us to do, to do good works for fellowship, for, for being the light, for being the salt, right? It says, as Christians, it is very important that we know who we are in Christ. Uh, you know, as parents, and I have two young boys, as parents, it's very important for us to guide and direct our children and help them to find their identity, but not to let, not to let the world choose it for them, but to let, and you don't really give them your identity. Your sons and daughters have their own identity, but you kind of help lead them in the right way, amen? Um, just like Jesus gave us free will to make the choices, but he's still our Heavenly Father, and he wants to, to guide us and direct us in the right path. It's our choice to, to make the correct choice and choose what Jesus has for us rather than what the world has for us, but it's, but it's still his desire for us to have and do good things. Um, as Christians, it's very important for that we know who we are in Christ. So we're going to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. <clears throat> it says, This means that anyone who belongs to Christ, to Christ, has become a new person. Everyone say new person. New person. The old life is gone, and a new life has begun. And the old life is gone, a new life has begun. Colossians chapter 2 verse 13 says this. You were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all sins. Everything that was, that was past, right? That was before Jesus. Once you accept, once you accept Jesus Christ in, as, into your heart as your Lord and Savior, all those things are gone away. All those sins are forgiven. And we become a new in Christ Jesus. It says in Psalms chapter 139 verse 14, it says this. It says, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. God spent time on each and every one of you. No matter if you're young or old. You are important to Jesus. You are his child. You are a child of God. We need to, to, to remind ourselves of this because sometimes our worlds get so busy and so hectic and things uh, come down upon us, um, different si situations, and we forget that we are children of God, of the Most High God, um, and He has a purpose for us. You know, sometimes we put uh, you know, a, a, a borders on what, what we can do or what we accomplish. And I was talking with a young lady after a first service, and she was just thanking me for the message. And, uh, but it's God's message. But she was thanking me for it. And, um, but she was just saying, you know, we, we put ceilings on what we can accomplish as, as humans, you know. And uh, God wants so much more for us. But we limit him because, because we just lack understanding, plain and simple. Once we, we gain the understanding of what Jesus um, has empowered us to do what we can do in Christ because it's not us but us in Christ it's Jesus who's, who's doing it then you know we can far out, out seed our expectations and, and do the, the great things which God has planned for us long before the, even we were born um, I want to read a couple more um, verses and I'm just going to go down I have a list here so just listen for here. It says, I am God's possession. I am his child. I am God's workmanship. I am God's friend. I am God's vessel. I am his co-laborer. I am his witness. I am his ambassador. I am his precious jewel. I am his heritage. I have been redeemed. I have been set free from sin. I have been set free from Satan's control. I have been chosen before the foundation. I have pre been predestined. I have been forgiven of all my trespasses. I have been washed in the blood. I have been given the Holy Spirit. I have been justified freely by His grace. I have been given great and precious promises. I have been given wisdom. 
I am complete. I am free from sin. I am sanctified. I am loved eternal, eternally. I am eternally kept in the palm of his hand. I am not condemned. I am one with the Lord. I am quickened by his mighty power. I am the head and not the tail. I have access to the Father. I have a living hope. I have an anchor to my soul. I have hope that is sure and steadfast. I have power to witness. I have boldness and excess. I have faith, faith as a grain of mustard seed I have. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can come boldly to the throne. I can tread on a serpent. I declare liberty to the captives. I, I can chase a thousand. I can defeat. I can tr tread Satan under my foot. I cannot be separated from God. I cannot be, cannot be perished or be lost. I cannot be moved. I cannot be taken out of my Father's hand. I cannot be charged or accused. I cannot be condemned. I am God's masterpiece. We need to say these things to ourselves. Why? Because the world says so much to us that we need to replace all that, for lack of a better word, crap, with Jesus stuff. When we replace it with Jesus stuff, the inner man, the inner woman, the inner spirit builds up and allows us to walk out our faith in the way in which God has planned for us. Amen? <clears throat> I am said that I am in Christ. I am as Jesus. He said that we are in Christ. It is because we are in Christ that we have access to God. It is because that we are in Christ that we have salvation. It is because that we are in Christ that we have salvation. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says this again. <clears throat> For we are God's masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do all the good things he planned for us long ago. Jesus has mighty things in store for us. We have to retrain our mind to know and think that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus to do the good things, to do the good works, to spread the gospel, to be the light, to be the salt for Jesus so that we might grow his kingdom. I know everyone has a family or a friend, friend or somebody that they are acquaintance with that know they need Jesus, right? It is our job to fill ourselves up so that we can pour out into our community, into our surrounding um, influence, amen? It's just not come here on Sunday, get filled up and keep it all for ourselves. No, it's come to Sunday, come to Wednesday, come to Monday, come to Thursday, get filled up, go out into the world, pour yourself out, come back, Fill yourself up. Go back in the world. Pour yourself out so that we can make an impact and build his kingdom. I am his masterpiece. You are his masterpiece. We're going to watch a quick video, but I just want you guys to remember you are his masterpiece.
I am his masterpiece. Come here, Trevin. <clears throat> right there you go. As a youth pastor, as a pastor, as a believer, as a father of, follower of Christ, my job, my desire, my goal, my passion is to get what I feel. That makes sense. Right there. Take it out and put it right there so you feel what I feel. So you have that passion, that desire, that love, unconditional. That you know, 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 that you know. Jesus loves you. That he will not forsake you. That he's there for you all the time. Can I just rip it out of my stomach and put it in your stomach? No. You have to read. You have to understand. You have to digest. You have to fellowship. You have to consume his word. You have to listen. Not to me. That's nice. Thank you. But to him. And when he says move, you move. And when he says love, you love. And when he says Peace, be still. You rest. Because he is your heavenly father and you are his master peace who he created to do great things <laughs> among all of us. Thanks, Trevin. That's my goal. That's your pastor's goal. That should be your goal. Not to live this life and just walk about aimlessly doing the normal things, even though we all have to do the normal things because that's what life is. But there's something bigger. There's something greater. There's something better. Amen? There's something better. Amen? Amen. Jesus is better. I was reading a blog last night. It wasn't a blog. I don't know what it was, but it was ridiculous but it was just people going back and forth about why they didn't believe in God and how bad God is and if there was a God why is all this sin and, if they, and then there would, there would be Christians that chimed in and some of them were good and some of them were just like I just wanted to say don't say anything <laughs> because it just makes us look bad because it doesn't come from a loving heart it comes from a hatred heart and that is not what Christ is. Christ is love. Christ is your Father. You are His masterpiece. Don't let the stuff of your past bring you down. Get rid of the baggage. Jesus forgave it. The stuff in the present, give it up to God. He can handle it. Your future. Ask God for wisdom. He gives it liberally. It says it in the Bible. That's not Josh's words. That's his words. Ephesians. Chapter 3. Verse 14 through 19. <clears throat> says this. When I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from this glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with the inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ through, through it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God.
Dear Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love, how high, how wide, how long it is. We thank you that it's all-consuming. We thank you that you are present here with us today. We thank you that you walk with us every day. We thank you for everyone that made it out here. We thank you for the eyes and the ears that were open today to receive your message, the message that you made us a masterpiece, your masterpiece, that you love us unconditionally. We pray that we can be complete in you because we are in Christ Jesus. We pray that we can go out into the world and overflow onto other people so that they might hear the message and see the message, the gospel message, the good news, dear Lord, because we just want to spread your love and your word to further your kingdom so more people might have the feeling of Jesus and the relationship with Jesus. We ask that you keep us safe, that we have a, a great and safe afternoon with the Super Bowl, that you just uh, love on us as we love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. So I told you it was pretty quick, kind of, maybe. Love you guys. Have a good week.